Hi, Team Thompson. I'm coming to you a little bit late today. Sorry about that, but I've been in meetings trying to prepare for Wednesday, and I've been filming myself teaching you the lessons that you'll start on Wednesday. So you'll see that I got a little uh, fancier with my videos. I put in some music and some art and some clips, so hopefully you'll find that entertaining. Um, I'm also running a little behind today because I was running some errands um, during my lunch break, and I'm just trying to figure out some ways to, to cheer up my neighbors. Um, and one of the things I'm going to do is I found some of these signs with encouraging messages. They say, you got this. On the other side, it says, don't give up. And I'm actually going to go sneak and put one in Miss Jaber's yard today. Speaking of spreading kindness, let's jump into today's shout outs. And today I was looking for shout outs for Abby, Maya Ogenard, and Miri. If you did not give me your shout outs, um, sometimes it's hard to get those in um, since you see it Friday and then it's over the weekend and you might forget by Monday, and you type them into your doc, please tag me in that so I can add the um, shout outs to their list of shout outs. So if you haven't gotten them into me yet, that's fine, but just send them to me and let me know. Shout outs for me. Okay. Sorry, I think I just got a little glitch in the video. All right, so shout outs today. We're going to start with Abby. Abby, I so miss you. You are just hilarious, and I miss your positive energy when you walk in the classroom every day. I miss your smile. Um, Maya Ogenard really loves playing basketball with you, and you are such a kind friend. She misses you a lot. Maya Davis says, I miss playing games with you. Will Benders says that you are always kind. Will Moylan said, you're so funny. Neri says that she would describe you as funny, helpful, and generous. And Ms. Jaber says that she misses your enthusiasm and positive energy. Math and science just aren't as fun without your commentary and your reactions. I'd say read aloud isn't as fun without you either, Abby. I, I miss interacting with you guys on a daily basis. All right, Neri, listen up. Here are your shout outs. Maya Davis says you're so kind and funny. Maya Ogenard says you're a great friend and really appreciates how you make everyone laugh. Will be. Um, says that you are funny and nice. Will Moylan says you are funny. And Ms. Javer says, you have worked so hard this year and I cannot express to you how proud I am of you. I am missing your sweet smile. Yes, I'm missing that about you too, Neri. I hope you're doing well. Sending you all the good vibes. Hope you're getting along with your sister. Tell Tessa I said hi. Um, and then next, Maya Ogenard. Maya, I appreciate your daily shout outs to me. Um, I've been getting so much good love and, and positive vibes from you, Maya, and I appreciate it so much. So listen up. Maya Davis says you're so funny and you're nice to all people. Will B says you're super funny. Will M says you are a great friend. Neri said she'd describe you as brave, cheerful, and smart. And Miss Javer says you are one of the most driven and committed third graders I have ever met. So lucky to have you as a student. Uh, I would definitely agree with her. And I love that Neri called you brave. I would say you are a super brave girl. Um, all right, guys. So that means tomorrow are our final two uh, shout outs. And these two, I mean, I shouldn't say I saved the best for last, but these two have been really patient waiting for their names to be called. So I've got Anna and... Drum roll. Addie. All right, so just two shout outs this time. Addie and Anna, let's give them lots of good vibes and lots of love because they had to wait till all the way till the end. All right, guys, we're going to read The Wild Robot. And I didn't prepare a mindful minute for us today. Um, sorry about that, but like I said, I was just running around. So maybe today's mindful minute can be what ways are you going to cheer some up to someone up today? How are you going to spread a little kindness to a neighbor maybe today? All right. Chapter 36, The Gosling Grows. Hmm, let me think back to what was happening. Hmm. Yes, Bright Bill was um, swimming around and he almost got bitten or hurt by Rockmouth and Loudwing had to help get him to safety because Roz can't go swimming since she's a robot. The Gosling Grows. Brightbill soon forgot about the incident with Rockmouth, and he spent his mornings cruising around the pond with the other goslings. 
He was becoming a great little swimmer. He was also becoming a great little speaker. Hello, my name is Bright Bill, he said to anyone who would listen. The gosling was small for his age, and he would, and he always would be, but he was growing bigger and stronger by the day. His increasing size was matched by his increasing appetite. He gobbled down grass and berries and nuts and leaves. Sometimes he'd snack on little insects. If it was edible, Bright Bill would eat it. And even if it wasn't edible, he might eat it anyways. Roz felt something like fright the time she saw Bright Bill swallowing pebbles on the beach. She was holding him upside down, hoping the pebbles would fall out of his mouth. When Loudwing stepped in, put the gosling down, said the goose with a laugh. It's perfectly natural for Bright Bill to eat a few pebbles. They'll help him digest his food, but not too many. Okay, little one? Like most youngsters, Bright Bill was incredibly curious. He explored the garden and the pond and the forest floor, and he would occasionally explore neighboring homes. He'd wander down some hole in the ground and say to whoever was there, Hello, my name is Bright Bill. Then a long robot arm would reach in and pull the gosling back outside. Sorry to bother you, Roz would say in her friendliest voice. The mother and son slipped into a good nighttime routine. While the gosling slept, the robot might tend to the fire if it was cool out, or gently fan him if it was warm. If he woke up hungry or thirsty, Roz brought him food or water, and whenever he had nightmares, she was always there to rock him back to sleep. Okay, you're about to meet my favorite character. Um, it's a little squirrel named Chit Chat, and I love this character. Okay, chapter 37, The Squirrel. There she is. A small squirrel was scurrying through the garden. Bright Bill had never seen her before. He peered out from the nest and watched her bounce across the lawn. After a minute of spying, the gosling shook his tail feathers and waddled outside. Hello, my name is Bright Bill. The squirrel froze. Then she slowly turned around, and then she started to talk. Hi, Bright Bill. My name is Chit Chat, and I'm a 12 and a half week old squirrel, and I'm new around here, and your home is really big and round, and I don't understand why smoke sometimes comes out of it. I love Chit Chat because she talks so fast. So hopefully you can understand me when I imitate Chit Chat. If not, pause it and rewind it. Reader. I'm not quite sure how Chit Chat got enough air into her lungs to go on like that, and I'm not quite sure how Bright Bill had the patience to listen. But he stood there and politely nodded as Chit Chat rambled on and on and on. And sometimes I see you waddling behind your funny looking mother and you seem so nice that I thought I'd come down and introduce myself, but now I'm nervous and I'm talking too much and my name is Chit Chat and I think I said that already. There was a pleasant silence. Silence. Bright Bill stood on one foot for a moment. Then the gosling took a deep breath and said, it's very nice to meet you, Chit Chat. I don't think you talk too much. I think you talk just enough, and I like you, so let's be friends. A big smile appeared on the squirrel's tiny face. For once, Chit Chat was speechless. The new friendship. Chit Chat wasn't speechless for long. She'd already been alive for a whole 12 and a half weeks, and she wanted to tell Bright Bill about every exciting thing and every boring thing that had ever happened to her. And so, as the new friends played and explored and ate together, the squirrel shared her stories. I was born on the other side of the hill, and then last week I decided I was ready to build my first dray, which is what you call a squirrel nest, and now I live in that tree with the weird bump in its trunk. She said while the two of them kicked pebbles into the pond. One time a weasel chased me through the treetops until he missed a branch, and I fell all the way down and crashed into a bush and walked away all wobbly, and he never bothered me again. She said while the two of them crawled through a hollow log. Ew, gross. I saw you eat that ant one time. I ate a gnat by accident, and I didn't like it at all. I mostly ate acorns and bark and tree buds and sometimes the yummy berries that grow in your garden, she said while the two of them took a snack break. But Chit Chat was a good listener, just as good of a listener as she was a talker. But whenever, and then whenever Bright, it was Bright Bill's turn to speak, she'd keep quiet and hang on to his every word. Do you know who enjoyed their conversations most of all? Our robot Roz. The protective mother was never far away, and she felt something like amusement at the silly conversations she overheard, and she felt something like happiness that her son had made such a good friend. Chapter 39. The First Flight. Bright Bill had spent his entire life by the pond, and he was becoming very curious about what lay beyond his neighborhood. So one day his mother said to him, let us go for a walk. I will show you more water than you can possibly imagine. Roz placed the gosling on her flat shoulder, and the two of them set across the island. 
They marched out of the forest, crossed the great meadow, and climbed uphill until they were at the top of the island's western ridge. Before them was a grassy slope that descended all the way to the dark, choppy waves that surrounded the island. That is a lot of water, said the wide-eyed gosling. I'm a good swimmer, but I'm not good enough to swim across that pond. That is not a pond, said the robot. That is an ocean. I doubt any bird could swim across an ocean. Waves rolled in from the horizon. Seagulls circled above the shore. A steady breeze blew up the slope. Brightbill's yellow fluff had recently changed over to a coat of silky brown feathers, and he spread his feathery wings into the breeze, and then, Mama, look! For the briefest of moments, the wind lifted Brightbill off the ground, but he quickly tipped backward and thumped into the soft grass. I was flying, he squeaked. That was not flying, said Roz, looking back at her upside-down son. Well, I was almost flying. I'm going to try again. I have observed many birds in flight, said Roz. Sometimes they flap their wings quickly, and other times they fly without flapping at all. They spread their wings and soar on the wind. So I was soaring, said Brightbill. Almost. There, look at the soaring seagull. It seems like she is not doing anything, but if you look closer, you will notice she is making small adjustments with her wings and tail. I think you should try adjusting your wings in the wind, like her. Brightbill hopped onto a rock and opened his wings wide. The wind is pushing me backwards. Change the angle of your wings, said his mother. Let us see what happens when they slice through the air. Brightbill slowly angled his wings downward, and the more he turned them, the less the wind pushed him backward, and just as his wings leveled off, Mama, look, he squeaked at his feet as his feet left the ground. I'm soaring, I'm soaring. He hovered there for a second, rising a little higher than before, and then he sailed backward onto the soft grass again. The gosling kept hopping onto the rock and kept riding the wind and kept tumbling into the grass until he started to find his wings. With each attempt, he floated a little higher and a little longer. And finally, Brightbill really did soar. He lifted high into the air and hung there, floating. He turned his wings down and felt himself drop. He wiggled his tail feathers and felt himself veering back and forth. I'm a natural, he squeaked. You are doing very well, said Roz, but you need to keep practicing. And so they spent the afternoon practicing up on the ridge. Once Brightbill was comfortable soaring, he tried flapping his wings. He flapped high into the air. He flapped in straight lines. He flapped around and around in circles. And a big smile appeared on the gosling's face. Clearly, Brightbill was designed to fly. I'm flying, Mommy. I'm really flying. You are flying, said the robot. Very good. Brightbill was now a real flyer. But all that flying had worn him out. He lowered himself toward the ground and tumbled into the grass one last time. His landings still needed some work. Roz placed Brightbill on her shoulder and headed back to the nest. I can't believe I can fly now, Mama, said Brightbill in his sleepy voice. I just wish, I just wish you could fly with me. And then the gosling's words were replaced by his quiet, steady breathing. Hmm. I wonder how Brightbill being able to fly now is going to affect his relationship with his mother, Roz. And I think that Roz is being such a great mother. She's very robotic in her, um, interactions, but I think that she's doing a great job being a goose mother to Brightbill. Did you guys love Chit Chat? I think she's hilarious, and I never take a breath when I read her character's words. All right, tune in tomorrow to hear more about the wild robot. Also, I wanted to tell you where I got this sign. It's um, a company, I think it's called Don't Give Up, and it's um, a nonprofit organization that brings awareness to mental health and just keeping us all um, healthy mind and healthy body. And I felt like these signs right now are, are really needed. So I've got one in my front yard um, and I've been passing them out to some friends today. But anyways, I thought if you were interested, I might tell you about that. I found them on Instagram. Okay. Well, I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I know some of you picked up a Chromebook today. Um, so you're going to probably be interacting with me a bit more. Um, is there anything else I need to tell you? I am learning different ways to interact with you guys. So soon you're going to learn about Google Meet, which is a way that we can keep in touch. Um, I'll send out more information about that. I'm sure your, your parents are feeling a little overwhelmed by all the emails, but tell them to take a deep breath. 
I think that everything's going to get easier when we start this new um, It's Learning platform on Wednesday. It should. So take a deep breath and reach out to Miss Thompson if you need help because I'm here and I have the time. Um, I was telling, I think, Liam's mom that I went from getting like 400 questions a day when I was with my, was when I was with my class to having about four questions a day. So I can help you if you need it. All right. See you, everybody. Happy Monday, and I will talk to you tomorrow.